Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Einstein's Eyes, where we explore everything related to ophthalmology. I'm Carl Rosen, Oculoplastic Neuro-Ophthalmology Fellowship Training in Anchorage, Alaska, where I've been for many years, primarily oculoplastics now. My friend and partner from residency back at Einstein, John Ditkoff. John? Hi, everyone. My name is John Ditkoff. Uh, I'm a general ophthalmologist. I've been in practice for 30 years in northern New Jersey. I specialize in cornea, specifically dry eye and uh, laser vision correction. And it's so nice to see Carl. We have a beautiful day here in New Jersey. I'm not sure about Anchorage. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about something interesting. I'm really excited to hear about this. Yeah, we're talking about, we're going to delve into Flomax and its impact on your eyes, particularly focusing on something called floppy iris syndrome and its implications for cataract surgery. By the way, it's a beautiful day here in Anchorage. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, it's summer, it's green, it's awesome. You can't beat Good. Alaska in the summer. You just you just can't. I so why don't we do this? I'm going to quickly just say why mo most people are taking Flomax out there. There's a, many, many people on it. And then I want Carl's perspective on how it affects the eyes. So, but Flomax is used for many different purposes by urologists. Um, those are the most common pr practitioners that prescribe it. And they prescribe it for a host of things. But the most, most common one is just kind of urinary issues where people are having difficulty urinating, uh, either the, the detrusor muscle doesn't push well enough, or there's some instability in the bladder. Uh, and it's a very good drug. But um, we discovered years ago that it does affect uh, the eyes. And Carl's going to tell us how. Yeah, so its generic name is Tamsulosin. We're not going to have a test on this, but I just want everyone to know. And it's it's for relief of symptoms related to an enlarged prostate, which if you live long enough, every guy will get. It's called benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH. And like John said, Flomax relaxes the muscles in the bladder and the prostate, making it easier to pee. Um, the side effects, though, uh, can cause complications for cataract surgeons. And cataract surgery, you know, the complications rate is about 2 to 3%. Maybe it's more in residency maybe up to 5%, but with Flomax, you cause the iris to get floppy and it billows when you put the phaco into the eye with the fluids that are streaming into the anterior chamber and around the lens as you're emulsifying the lens. And you probably, it, it looks like the literature says it doubles the complication rate. You can damage the iris uh, during this procedure because it's just not sturdy. Um, you can get, you know, all sorts of issues like iris prolapse where it, it pops out of the wound, which can, it can cause the iris to thin and then light can pass through it when you're all done. You know, the trauma to the iris is, is implied here. It doesn't allow the pupil to dilate well before cataract surgery when you're being, when you're being prepared for cataract surgery in the pre-op phase. Uh, and sometimes you need to use something called iris hooks or a malusion ring that expands the space that your that a cataract surgeon is working in. It can increase the rate of posterior capsule of rupture. The capsule holds the lens. It also holds the cataract, but once you get the cataract out, you got to put the intraocular lens, the, the implant in, and it's it's held in place by this capsule and you can rupture the capsule. And then there's problems associated with that. Um, you know, good surgeons can take care of it though. It does increase the surgical time. And like I said, increases additional surgical instruments. Um, and you have to know other techniques, which most experienced cataract surgeons, veterans do. It also increases the cost because you're using more equipment. Um, now, you know, folks say, well, I'll just stop Flomax. The problem is that we found that if you just take Flomax for just a little bit, some even I've heard just taking it once and you forever change the iris. Now, is that true? We don't really have a good enough study, but that's what it seems like. So I used to do a lot of cataract surgery uh, in my younger days and Flomax was a pain. It was a real pain and you had to be prepared. You had to be mentally prepared. You had to have the iris hooks, which is what I used. 
available in the operating room and you had to take your time. Um, but having said all that, you still can have a successful surgery. But like I said, in, in my yeah, experience, uh, I'm not sure what John would say, but in my experience, it probably doubles the complication rate. So it does have a lasting impact. Um, John, any comments? Yeah, so I, I think that's a great summary. Uh, a couple of key points I would just reemphasize and maybe just simplify for you people out there. Uh, so Flomax, as Carl mentioned, the, the first problem is it, it's a permanent effect in many people. So I've had patients say to me, oh, I took that three years ago. And unfortunately, I've still seen that in the operating room in effect. And when I go in, the first thing I've noticed is exactly what Eddie said is, even though most patients dilate seven, eight, nine millimeters with, with, with dilating drops, some people dilate very poorly. So imagine operating through a very small space as opposed to a large space. So we're all used to that. We're experienced surgeons. We've had many patients that had small irides or small pupils. So we have all these techniques, but the problem then became, I used to stretch pupils. That's what I would do. I would just take two things and stretch open the pupil. I found that manipulating the iris and, and actually touching it, then the iris didn't respond normally. Like Coral said, it's a floppy iris. So all of a sudden the iris, instead of behaving normally, was flopping around. And as Carl mentioned, it could therefore get into the wound. It would be in my way, essentially doing the surgery. And again, the pupil is still small. So I think that's a reasonable assessment. I think it does probably double the risk of surgery, definitely increases the time, definitely increases the expense. Uh, one good thing you know, over the years is we've learned all these great techniques. In the early days, it was very difficult because first of all, we didn't even know what was gonna happen. Now we ask all of our patients, have you ever taken Flomax? Have you ever taken Tamisolin? Uh, and we, we come into the operating room a little bit more prepared. We, some surgeons, this is, you know, arguable, will start dilating drops three days before the surgery. Some people feel that helps. Some people insert uh, extra uh, dilating uh, solution into the eye, uh, epi sugarcane, things like that. They'll have dilating in the bottle. Um, but the bottom line is to, not to get in too technical. The bottom line is it makes surgery more difficult, but it also means that we all are aware of it. And you just want to make sure you tell your doctor, hey, I'm on this medication. So they go into the operating room or she goes to the operating room prepared. And I think outcomes nowadays are excellent. I think probably initially I might've agreed double fold. I think now with experienced surgeons, you can minimize that risk significantly, but it's really hard to know with, with all the other variables, what the actual risk is going to be to a person. Right, right, right. So the take home message, folks, is tell your cataract surgeon you're on Flomax. And if you're going to have cataract surgery and you haven't started Flomax, and your urologist wants to put you on Flomax, say, hey, let's just wait until after cataract surgery. <laughs> that'd, yeah. be, that'd be a good take-home message. Um, and interestingly, interestingly, I mean, urologists don't typically tell their patients about this ocular issue, even though most of them are aware of it. If you remember when Flomax first became popular, the TV ads said it at the end. It said, let your cataract surgeon know that you're on Flomax or that you've taken Flomax. Right. Because I think that's that was half the battle at the beginning. We just weren't aware. Right. And once we knew it, we kind of were, were prepared and we had the right things to do. Right, right, right. Absolutely. John, thank you. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here. Please subscribe. And we will see you on the next one. <laughs>